sorry, Mr. Speaker, as they prepare, Mr. Ndegwa's team went away with our bundle. If they can just return it so that we can refer to it, the biggest bundle. I, Linda Gaki Kiyome, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before the Senate in respect of the matters before the Senate shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Uh, thank you. Kindly tell the Senate your names. My name is Linda. What are your qualifications? I am an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. When were you admitted to the bar? Kindly you can give us your P105. My P105 is uh, 9006 stroke 2012. Uh, what are notable positions that you've ever held in your career? I have been a member in long standing of the Law Society of Kenya. I am a member of uh, uh, FIDA. I am a member and I have been the chairperson of Mount Kenya branch of Law Society of Kenya uh, and other positions therein for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, I was the interim president of the Law Society of Kenya for three months. Thereafter, I became a member of the Council of the Law Society of Kenya, representing advocates practicing in our country for this the second term now. When were you appointed by the governor as a legal advisor? On the 28th of March, 2023. Uh, and when was your termination or your contract terminated? An alleged termination that was uh, signed by a county, the chief of staff, Meru County, uh, Chambandede, dated on 26th of March this year, 2024. There is an affidavit dated 18th of August, 2024. Are you aware of that affidavit? I am aware of the affidavit. Uh, where have you filed that affidavit? I filed the affidavit before this Senate. Before this Senate? Yes. What are the circumstances leading to you filing that affidavit in this Senate? Uh, thank you, Council. While attending the annual conference in Mombasa, Diani. Kuala County. Yesterday I received a phone call from one of the MCAs from Meru County, Honorable DMK Kyogora, who informed me, or actually who asked uh, whether I was aware of a letter that I, I had written, uh, Kristen, as a legal advice to the Governor Meru County, while within the term which I was deemed to have been her legal advisor. And when I received that uh, letter through a WhatsApp, it was an alien document. I can confirm before this house that yesterday was the first time I have seen that document. It, it is not a document that emanated from myself. There is a, an internal memo uh, in the documents of governor brought to this Senate, uh, it's labeled as KM5, governor's document. I want you to have a look at it. You're there? 
Yes. I want you to have a keen look at that letter. From whose office is it emanating from? The letterhead seems to come from the office of the governor. Who is the author of the letter? It's from the legal advisor office of the governor. Who is that legal advisor office of the governor? According to that letter, at the very end, it has been signed off, but the name is not indicated. The Who name the... is not indicated. When was that letter, uh, oh, that memo written? On 23rd of February, 2024. 23rd February. Were you still the legal advisor to the governor? Technically, yes. Why are you saying technically yes? In the month of December 2023, the governor summoned me in her office in Meru and asked me to tender my resignation, out of which the subsequent letter for notice of termination was issued to me by Nchamba Mbebe, that was dated 28th. 26th of March, 2024. So, substantively, you are the legal advisor by 23rd February. Indeed, Council. Until which date did, did you vacate the office? When was your contract terminated? There was a notice of termination on 26th of March, 2024 which forms part of the affidavit that I filed before this Senate. And it indicated that my services would be terminated by 30th of April 2024. So, it means by 23rd February you are the legal advisor to the governor. Indeed so. Uh, I want you to look at the signature at the tail end of uh, that letter. It is on page 12 of the governor's document, that is volume 1B, governor's document. Whose signature is that? The signature mimics my signature. The signature mimics your signature. Why do you say it mimics your signature? I say it mimics my signature because I did not append this signature. Page 12 of the governor's document, volume 1B. Volume 1B. Uh, should be a blue copy. Counsel, could you also tell us uh, the affidavit by the witnesses on which document? The affidavit was filed by, by the witness, and that the, forms the basis of why we called her to be a witness today. It was filed to the clerk of the Senate yesterday. Should be an independent document. Very well. Proceed. So, you said the signature mimics your signature. Indeed, counsel. That means it's not your signature. It is not my signature. I did not sign this document and I did not prepare this document. The governor has brought this document to this Senate House, this Honorable House, to rely on this document as her evidence and for defense. What would you want this House to treat this document? Uh, first of all, uh Uh, what is your point of order, Senator Kajon? Uh, Mr. Speaker, just like you, I've, I've struggled to get visibility of that affidavit. I'm looking at the soft copies here. I can't find it. And it's such a material submission that it would make sense for us to proceed until and unless we can confirm that we have it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Just one moment. One moment, Clark. Council, one moment, Council. All right. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Stop the time, please. Mr. Speaker, sir, with your kind permission, we will be able to have 
the assistance of supplying the hard copies to the Honorable Senators as printed. If so you say so that pleases, again, Council? If it is so pleases you, Mr. Speaker, sir, we have the copies printed that the senators can have access to. Okay, but I'll give it to the Sergeant of Terms and please distribute to the We are most obliged. To the senators. Sorry. What's your point of order, Eddie? Thank you, Chair. I would just add to your pronouncement whether the affidavit was presented on time to the clerk. That's, I think that's the materiality with which the Senator of Homer Bay was referring to that particular piece of evidence. Thank you. May Council, if you could please explain the affidavit to the senators. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. We received documents from the governor, that is defense documents, on Saturday past 5 p.m., the required time. And uh, out of that, we realized some abnormalities, especially on, uh, on the part of the affidavits and uh, internal memos and letters given in the defense. And out of that, and uh, our witness being an advocate after coming across this document, she vehemently opposed the position of that document that she was not the author of the document and so we question the authenticity of that document. And that's why she was, uh, uh, she moved to swear an affidavit, that is uh, yesterday on 18th, and it formed the basis of our prayers this morning that this witness be called as a witness of the Senate to come and substantiate on the document because if this is not substantiated, then if it's a forgery, uh, if, and I'm saying if it's a forgery, then this House can form basis of the final determination of this case based on that document. And that's why she was called upon to come and give this evidence. What is your point of order, Eddie? <coughs> and uh, Eddie, if I could just give guidance that uh, this witness was uh, one of the uh, witnesses that was summoned through the Senate by the yes. request of the Council. And this, the summons went out this morning. Chair, Chair the material, materiality of the affidavit is just about the issue of timing and filing. But I just wanted to, to just... ...objected to what the council has just talked about. If, if, the, if he did, it was objected. Or otherwise, objected. Then, then that's fine. So Mr. far, he has not objected. Mr. Speaker, it was not objected in the morning, and that's Very why... Very well, we've established that, so please proceed. Thank you. We proceed to paragraph 7. I will request you uh, to read for us, for this house, paragraph number 7. Thank you, council, Mr. Speaker, and honorable members. I have deponed in paragraph 7 that I categorically state 
that the internal memo in question contains advice and information that I must clarify was neither prepared nor authorized by me and I want to make it unequivocally clear that I did not draft, review or endorse the contents of the said internal memo. I'll further request you to read paragraph 8. In paragraph 8, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, I depone that all the matters therein are alien to me and simply put, the governor has never sought any such legal advice from me and as such, the internal memo is a forged document and I will not hesitate to report the same for investigations by the Director of Criminal Investigations. I actually, when I arrived in Nairobi, I went to uh, the Parliament Police and they told me that the only place I can lay this claim is before the DCI in Meru County. And that will be the first thing that I will do because I feel aggrieved. I feel I was impersonated. I feel that as an advocate of the High Court, of so many years of practice, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, this advice, even my own people, could have done something better. I have a lot of respect for the governor. In fact, I look up to her in a lot of ways. She's a resilient woman. But when I saw this letter, my heart sank with Thank a lot of regret. Thank you. I will further invite you to read paragraph 13, that is in page 2. Just, I will tell you where to stop. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members of the Senate, I deponed in paragraph 13 that the internal memo has been forged and manipulated to appear as if it originated from me. Thank you. Let's go to paragraph 15. No, let's do 12, 12 first. Paragraph 12, Mr. Speaker, sir, and members, honorable members of the Senate, I have deponed that the contents of this internal memo are not only mediocre, but also embarrassing. And to say the least, the internal memo could not have been prepared by an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Such advice must have clearly emanated from a person who has very little knowledge on serious matters of law as such which were being addressed in that internal memo. So, Council, in finality of this matter, you want to say that the document forming basis of defense of the governor has elements of forgery, especially on this internal memo? Absolutely, yes. Thank Mr. you. Speaker, sir. That is all for, for us. Council, you can uh, Thank proceed you. with the cross-examination. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Because of time constraints, I will go direct to the issue at hand. I'll call you by your formal names, Linda Gaki Kiyome, for purposes of these proceedings. So, uh, Linda Gaki Kiyome, please confirm for the record that you are an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Indeed so, my Thank you. Thank you so much. You're aware that the issue you have now brought before this Senate is a controversy as to whether you issued the advice in question or you did not issue the advice in question. Is that a correct summary of the issue? Indeed so. Thank you so much. The governor's case from your reading of the, impeach the response, the impeachment that she received, this advice. Is that not correct? That is correct. Your position is that it is not you who issued this advice. That is true. 
just for my own understanding, is it your case that the governor, as a matter of fact, never received this advice? I may not know, but I am not the one who prepared this document, and I am not the one who signed this document. In fact... Sorry, Linda, let's, let's just... Uh, the time here is such a big issue. I want to just make a clarification. Is it your case that, as a matter of fact, the governor never received this advice? From me, no. Not, no I'm not saying from you. I'm saying, as a matter of fact, you never received it. I may not know. You do not know. And what would bother this Senate, if I sat where the Senator's seat would be, why would you come to make this kind of grave claims against the governor? That is a legitimate question, isn't it? Indeed, sir. So. Let's see whether we can find an answer to that question. Linda, your services as the legal advisor to the governor were terminated by the county government of Meru, were they not? They were terminated. I'm happy. I just want to confirm that fact. Now, you did not take this lying law. You filed Meru Employment and Labor Relations case number E022 of 2024 against the governor's government of Meru. So not true? That is true. So you have an active dispute with the governor of Meru, don't you? Indeed so. Thank you so much. Prior to this, Linda, you were the running mate to the Honorable Mithika Linturi in a ticket adverse to the governor's ticket in the last general election. Is that true or not true? That is true, Honorable Members. Thank you so much. And you are a resident of Meru County. I am a resident of Meru County. It is fair to say that the governor, Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, does not enjoy a very good relationship with Honorable Mithika Linturi. Is that a fair assessment? That is not a fair assessment, Mr. Speaker, sir, and Honorable Members. Okay, let me put it contrary. The governor enjoys a fantastic working relationship with the Senate with Honorable Mithika Linturi. Is that now a fair assessment? Mwalimu, if you had let me finish. No, uh, you have answered my question. I have limited time. The speaker there knows just how much time I have, and therefore I'm asking very limited questions. The, you said it is not fair that the governor does not enjoy a good relationship. I'm therefore suggesting to you, confirm, that the governor, Kawira Mwangaza, enjoys a fantastic working relationship with the person to whom you are the running mate, Honorable Mithika Linturi. Is that a fair assessment? I may not know that. You do not know. I'm happy with that answer. You are aware that there was an impeachment motion in Meru County Assembly by the same mover of the motion that brings us here today, just this month of July. True or not true? I am aware. And you are aware that in that impeachment motion, your termination, the termination of your services as the legal advisor to the governor was an issue raised for removal of this governor from office. I saw the impeachment motion and I confirm that is the position. Thank you so much, Linda. Linda, if I look at your affidavit, you want to make us believe that the person who drew your attention to the fact that this legal advice is here in Senate was Honorable D. M. K. Kiogora. Is that correct? Honorable members, that is the true fact. Thank you so much. Honorable D. K. D. M. K. Kiogora is the same person who moved the first impeachment motion against this governor before this Senate. True or not true? That is true. Thank you so much. Honorable DMK Kyogora is the same person, is a part, one of the people who signed on the motion in support of the removal of this governor, which motion brings us here today. True or not true? That is true. Honorable. That is true. And therefore, it is fair for us to conclude, is it not, that you are actually procured by those who are sub against the governor to come and state what you have stated before this Senate. Isn't that a fair assessment? It is a very unfair comment. Mo Thank you so much. I'll leave with that. Allow me to move to something else very uh, small, very little. We want us to believe that you came to this Senate as an independent witness, not one of those witnesses summoned by the county assembly. No, I mean, uh, voluntarily giving evidence for the county assembly. I came here to clear my name. You came here to clear your name. But somehow, as early as yesterday, in advance of the county assembly's application today to this Senate, you had already affidavit to support their evidence. 
I sent that affidavit to the speaker at 10 p.m. at night. Last but who, how was it received? The copy I've been served does not have any receiving stamp in this Senate. How was it received? I may not know how it was received, but I sent it to the email of the speaker of this Senate. Oh, it's your testimony this affidavit was sent in soft copy? I did so, but I sent, I also sent uh, DM Kyogora to ensure that it has been served. Uh -huh. You also dispatched DM Kyogora yes. a signatory yes. to the impeachment motion against this government to follow this governor to follow up for you that this has been received here. True or not true? Honorable Speaker. You also sent DM Kyogora, didn't you? I asked him to confirm. Correct. Let's use the word asked to save time. You also asked him to confirm for you. True or not true? It is true. Thank you so much, Linda. Having said that, in the case you have filed at Meru Employment and Labor Relations Court, case number E022 of 2024, one of your witnesses in that case is Virginia Kawira. You know that? No, she is not my witness. I have sued the county public service together with the governor. Yes, I'm asking, is, is Virginia Kawira one of your witnesses She's in that not. case? She is not one of my witnesses, honorable members. Let me move uh, in finalization of uh, this, this matter. The opinion in question has a signature. Does that signature resemble your signature? It resembles, I said it mimics my signature. I'm asking a different term. Is it, does it resemble your, does it look like your signature? It resembles my signature. Thank you so much. It was issued during your term in office. I may not know, but the dates are within the dates, time the date, the date is with the time when you were in office. Indeed so. During that term, you used to render legal advice to the governor. At that time? During that period in office. The governor had already asked me to make a resignation. Uh, I'm asking, that time you were in office, had your term been, has your service has been terminated? The governor was only waiting to write for me a letter to dismiss me. Verbally, she had asked me to resign in December 2023. Sorry, Linda, let me ask you a question that, let me go back a little. Is your advocate in your case in Meru, Ngwele, and company advocates? He is. Would, that case was filed on 21st May 2024. It is. You filed a list of witnesses in that case? Yes, I did. You are witness number one in that case? In fact, you are witness number one on that list of witnesses in that case. Yes. Would it surprise you that in soft copy in front of me is that list of witnesses with Virginia Kawira Miriti yes. as your witness number two? Would at, it surprise you? At the time. Would it surprise you? It will not surprise me. So it is true that in that court case, the list of witnesses filed there for you lists Virginia Kawira Miriti as your witness. At the time before the same Virginia... Is it true that that list filed in that court lists Virginia Kawira Miriti as your witness number two? It does. Thank you so but much. But circumstances changed. I have no problem with that. At least this Virginia Kawira Miriti is the same person the county assembly has also applied to come here today and also give evidence that they were not able to procure her earlier as a witness. Come, come again? Today the county assembly applied for some witness summons. Are you aware that together with you, they also sought that Virginia be summoned? I'm not aware. I'm now putting to you as a fact that she was also summoned. Now, I want to suggest to you that these, co these coincidences are too fantastic to be merely coincidental. Honorable members, I was later dismissed after I filed my suit by the same uh, Virginia Kawera and she signed a dismissal letter against me and now circumstances have changed she is no longer my witness and we have admitted to the court to ask to amend our pleadings to reflect as much so she's not my witness to your knowledge do you know of a further list of witnesses filed in that case I may not reflect my... A researcher going to that court file will find only one list of witnesses listing you and Virginia. Indeed so. Thank you. The same Virginia who you also know has sued the county governor for the uh, termination of the revocation of her appointment as uh, the secretary to the service board. I 
I do not know. You do not know that fact. Yes. But I'm suggesting to you that all these things I have pointed here, if you start as an objective observer, will show that you have a bone to pick with the governor. If I was to bring my statements for calls, I have never talked to Virginia, nor to any other member of the county. The question was different. I'm saying all this filing of the case, you are Mithika's running mate, your name was in the impeachment motion. I would have gone into the public participation where your name was mentioned multiple times as the reason for this motion before us. We shall submit that letter to the senators because the record is before them. Show that generally you have some bond to pick with the governor. There's a quarrel you have with the governor because your services were terminated. I have no quarrel with the governor. In, will... in fact, when I receive my appointment letter, it is the former cabinet secretary for agriculture, Mithika Linturi, who told me, go and help my sister in Meru County. Thank you and so much. she also affirmed that while I was, she was giving me my appointment letter. I have no fight with the governor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Linda, there is something in the Bible called the case of betrayal. But thank you so much. I will not at that. Mr. Speaker, Sam, my name is Ndeko Mwangi. I'll take very few minutes in re-examination. Re Madam Linda. Yes. Did the governor Counsel, give you... Counsel, you only have 14 minutes. I'll Just take be less aware. than that, Mr. Speaker. Did the governor give you the job knowing that you are the deputy governor to Honorable Min Ritika Minturi? She did. Did... The governor seems to be having a litany of cases against her former employees. Come again, counsel. The governor seems to be having so many cases in court with her former employees. Are you aware of that? I am aware. You are asked whether the issues, several issues have been raised before this Senate. Uh, the issue of whether you have filed a case and whether Virginia is your witness. And the issue in question is the memo. Is it your evidence that the signature does not belong to you? Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members of the Senate, I am an advocate of the High Court. I would not come to lie to Honorable Members. This is not my signature. This signature has been lifted from previous documents and placed on this document. And would you know whether the governor really received that evidence, uh, that advice, when it's not you who gave it to her? I may not know, uh, Mr. Speaker, signed honorable members. Now, does, what is the case that has been mentioned as relating to the question of the internal memo? Is there any relationship? It's no relationship. This is about uh, legal advice. And I have come to clear my name. Why? Because of the mediocrity of the advice. I would have wanted to also be a national leader. I had applied to be a PS. If I come to the committee that, uh, that, uh, you know, that, um, that hears, you know, the appointments from the national government and such a document is presented as to have emanated from me, how would I, um, how would I speak for myself? How would I defend myself? The only reason I am here is to clear my name. And I am so disappointed that such a document would be forged with my name by Her Excellency. I have no ill feelings whatsoever against the governor. A link has been laid that the honorable member who called you, relating the honorable member to the first impeachment motion, my question to you is, is there a relationship or what came before the first impeachment and your internal memo, the, the forged internal memo? Come again, counsel. There is a link that has been created yes. that you are here to perpetuate the deeds of the honorable member who called you mm -hmm. to report to you about the internal memo. The question is, the first impeachment that was uh, moved by the said honorable member, mm -hmm. was it before the forged signature? It was before the forged signature. So you cannot be a conduit of 
the said member. Can you? No, I honestly, I am not. That's all, Mr. Honorable Speaker. Um, counsel, uh, legal counsel for the assembly, just be aware that you only have 10 minutes yes, Mr. to Speaker. conclude with providing your evidence and witnesses. We are most humbled. Within the 10 minutes, kindly allow us to call our next and 